Hello students, analyzing qualitative data is a tricky job. So this lecture will brief you how you can analyze qualitative data and what are the techniques to analyze qualitative data. You can see this picture. This is a data analysis spiral. From the raw qualitative data, start from the below, then you can organize the raw qualitative data. In that, process the filing procedure, create a database. If you have a large amount of data, so I suggest you to use a software and create a database. Then you can also break down the larger units into the smaller units. The next step after the organization of raw data is perusal. This means getting an overall sense of the data. It is suggested by researchers and Cresswell as well that read your collected data again and again, noting preliminary interpretations. After perusal, come on to classification step. Here, you need to group the data into the categories or themes. In another video, I showed you that how you can come up from coding to major themes. Then you need to find and interpret meanings in the data. After the classification of qualitative data, now come on the point to synthesize the qualitative data. Here you need to integrate and summarize the data for presentation. You can also construct diagrams, figures, hierarchies or you can also draw tables. However, in qualitative data, it is suggested that present your data through figures and diagrams. After that, write down your final report of qualitative data. So this spiral may help you from the raw qualitative data to the final report of qualitative data analysis. Dear students, qualitative data is custom built. This means that you can collect as much as data from the field which you find relevant. All steps in qualitative research are interrelated, starting from the design till the writing of the qualitative research report. Qualitative researchers learn by doing. Qualitative researchers collecting data from that field, they talk to the participants and by this experience, they learn so many things while collecting the data. Researcher moves through data not by fixed steps. As qualitative research design is a very flexible research design, so researchers move as the data moves. There are no fixed steps like in quantitative research. The next step in analyzing is interpreting the data. This is very, very important step. It involves making sense of the data. You can also write down the lessons learned from the field when you were collecting the data. This means you need to go beyond the themes, which means you need to display larger meaning of the data. Interpretation could be personal views, your insights while collecting the data or any in intuitions of the researchers. Researcher linked this personal views with others work. You can also link with other type of collected data or you can also link with previous studies. Researchers suggested that interpretation demands fair and careful judgments. Often the same data can be interpreted in different ways. So it is helpful to involve others or take time to hear how different people interpret the same data. This means that if the data is same and you have a team of researchers, so everybody could have a different angle of looking at the data. Think of ways you might do this. For example, you may hold a meeting with key stakeholders which are relevant to your research and discuss the data. You can also ask the participants, which are the participants of your research, what they think about the data. In that way, you'll be able to better interpret or display the meanings of your data. See, 
This is one of the example from Cresswell's book. Here, I'm showing you that how things are not always what we think. If you show this kind of picture of Alamban to six blind men, so what they perceived about this picture? One may feel the sight and thinks the elephant is like a wall. One feels the tusk and thinks the elephant is like a spear. One touches the squirming trunk and thinks the elephant is like a snake. As you can see in the figure, one feels the knee and thinks the elephant is like a tree. One touches the ear and may think the elephant is like a fan. One can grasp the tail and thinks it is like a rope. They argue long and loud and though each was partly in the right or you can also say that all were on the wrong side. This example shows you that how different researchers perceive data different. We all human beings have different perspectives to look at the world or to look at the reality. And this is the beauty of this world. Researchers also suggest that numbers do not speak for themselves. For example, what does it mean that 55 youth reported a change in behavior? Or 25% of the participants rated the program a 5 and 75% rated it a 4. What do these numbers mean? Here, the researcher or the author wants to give you an overview that this numerical representation of data is not very much meaningful. Interpretation is the process of attaching meaning to the data. So that's why interpretation is the very integral part of qualitative data analysis. Here I'm showing you one of the example of data analysis, which I extracted from one of the journal. How we can develop the initial coding. In one of my video, I have explained about how you can generate coding towards the themes. So you can also watch if you want to have an overview of the coding process. You can see in this table on the left side, these are the extracts from the participant interviews, the talks of the participants or the voices of the participants. On the right side, there are the codings, the initial first codes, or the early descriptive codes. After doing this first step, bring similar categories together to emerge with broader themes. After doing the first initial coding, bring all the similar categories together. I'm showing you this type of uh, categorization in my next slide. You can see here we gathered all the similar categories. On the right side, there are all the similar codes or the initial codes and we grabbed all the similar codes together in one column and on the right side we emerge with the final broader theme the less informed the CN. so in that way maybe you have a initial coding maybe then you have a second level of coding and then you may come to the uh, final theme however it all depends on the amount of the data you have there are different types of qualitative data analysis First, narrative research analysis, phenomenological analysis, grounded theory analysis, ethnographic analysis, and case study analysis. In this video, I'm focusing only on three types of data analysis, which I have highlighted here in red font, because these are the mostly used data analysis types in qualitative research. First of all, what is phenomenological analysis? You can also watch my video related to phenomenology as a qualitative research method. First, we need to describe the personal experience with the phenomenon. Researcher should begin with his or her own personal experience of the phenomena. Then develop a list of all the significant statements about how they are experiencing that phenomena. Do not select overlapping statements. As your purpose is to reduce the data, so do not collect the duplicate and the overlapping statements. Next, take only the significant statements and group them in order to develop the themes. 
You can also give textual description and include participants verbatim or the participant voices. Now write how the experience happened that means the context and the structural description or the setting of the field or the setting of the research. Inquirer reflects here settings, context or environment. For example, smoking behavior of high school students. In this example, the phenomenon is smoking and the setting is where the smoking occurs. Finally, write the composite description of the phenomenon incorporating. You need to incorporate the voices of the participants and on the other side you need to have the settings or the structural description of the phenomena. Now combine all those things together and get the similar categories. The another type of analysis in qualitative research is grounded theory analysis. It includes three phases of coding. Here the most level of codings are involved. For example, open, axial and selective. So first of all, the open coding, which you may call the initial or the very early codes from your qualitative data. Next, interconnecting, axial coding. Now you need to develop connection between the codings to get some of the similar categories. Then build story that connects the categories. This is also called selective coding. After doing that, you must emerge with some of the themes that is called theoretical propositions or the theory building step in your qualitative data analysis. Here I am showing you this figure which lets you how you can collect the qualitative data in ground, for grounded theory analysis. This picture will guide you that from the raw data in grounded theory analysis, how you can build the theory. The very first step and the lower box shows that here you need to develop your research aims, research questions, then you need to select the sampling and the recruitment of your participants, then come up with the data generation. For example, you may use the in-depth interviews, you can conduct focus groups, then comes with initial coding, which is the very first level of your coding then focused coding and categorization how you can do that build categories and properties or collect the similar categories together then in the next step here you start with sorting and integrating memos diagramming and theorizing here the steps begin with the theory building step what are the memos memos are your field notes your observations your intuitions your insights so here in this step you need to collect your intuitions your memos with your participants voices and the very next step after theory building is you need to write grounded theory here you must start writing with your final emerging grounded theory next type of analysis is case study analysis here Making a detailed description of the case and its settings is very, very important. If you want to know how you can conduct case study, you can watch my video related to case study method. In case study analysis, there are direct interpretations. Case study researcher looks at a single instance and draws meaning from it. Here you need to look only within a single case. Then you need to pull the data and putting them back in a meaningful way. Then you need to look for patterns and looks for a correspondence between two or more categories. This means here you need to develop connections between the emerged categories. I'm showing you the cross case analysis which we usually done in case study through this example. You can see this table shows the interview talk of four participants, Debbie, Jack, which are the students, 
and these are the student interviews and the next two columns Rene and Mark which are the teachers interview talk Rene and Mark which are the interviews of teachers. This blue arrow shows that these are the connections between the interview talk of Dabby, Jack and the Jack and the Rani. So these are showing you the interconnectedness between the interview talk. Here are some naturalistic generalizations. This means that some of the talk of the participants may not link with each other but those may be the universal truth. So you also need to point out some of the naturalistic generalizations happening in your data. So I think I have explained you all three types of data analysis in qualitative research. If you still have some questions in your mind, please do write in comment box and I'll get back to you soon.